so good morning and win today win tomorrow win forever and ever amen so i'm here today we're going to actually talk about the cost of uh, disobedience though i'm not going to read uh, most of the chapters because they are too long but i will encourage you in your own time take your time to read the book of uh, fix the kings chapter 11 you can read chapter 13 and you can also read the chapter 14 because they have a lot of lessons that you can actually learn from them so to start with before i go to the book of uh, kings i want to encourage you with the book of john chapter 14 verse 23 and it says jesus replied anyone who loves me will obey my teachings my father will love them and he will uh, come to them and make our uh, home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. So if you want to understand the love that you have for God, you will choose to listen more from God than listen to any other thing. Because God's love will direct you. God's love will allow you to move in humility even when others are moving in pride. God's love, that love that you have, then you take it to say, God, I want you to reign in my life. It will help you in order for you not to lose things. Because when you are disobedient, there is a lot of things that you lose. The reason why I've given you the books of First Kings, this is the time when Solomon started doing some intermarriages. He married the women from the different kind of nations. The nations that God had taught the Israelites to say that you should not marry with these people because they had their own gods. And when you go into this story, you find that Solomon, he married about 700 uh, wives and he had 300 concubines and these people they had their small gods and they turned his heart away from serving the true God because they also had their own altars they also wanted to burn incense and all that and slowly Solomon turned away from God and when he turned away from God God told him to say that I will tear down your kingdom I will give it to your subordinates I will not allow you to continue to read to rule so God does not lie. When he says things, he will do it just like he has said it. Some of us, there are certain kind of things that we are, we see them going so good just because they are coming so good, we think as if, uh, ah, it's because we are doing right. Some of the things that you are benefiting now is because of the prayers of your parents. The, your parents, you know, prayer can go as far as years, 10, 20 years ahead. This is why when you are sowing in prayers, you should never worry about your tomorrow, about the future, whatever, because you believe to say that these are the prayers that are sent to do the actions of uh, the, the future. So many of us, it's not that we are benefiting because we are doing what is right, because our mothers, our fathers prayed, and these are the things that we are enjoying now. But what about the things that you are planting now? What impact are they going to bring in your children's life? What impact are they going to bring in your family? Because what you are sowing, you will reap and even the other generation will also reap. So it's very important that we learn from the mistakes of others. If others make mistakes, then you are just there laughing. Then you don't have wisdom. You are actually a fool because the mistakes of others should make you to sit down, reflect, and pick one or two things from them and say, ah, what can I do in order for me not to do the same mistakes? But most of us, the same mistakes we want to go and get. Oh, it was a mistake. Oh, it was a mistake. Over and over. No. You know it that it is bad, but you choose to ignore that which is right and you choose to go the path that is not of God. Listen, when you go into the book of First Kings, um, chapter 14, uh, chapter 14 I, I'll read chapter uh, chapter 13 where I think you can read it by your, with your time because we don't have enough time so there was a prophet who was sent by God to go and give out a message to the Israelites and when he went out to give out the message he was instructed by God to say that don't use the same road that you used to go but make sure that you don't eat any food in this place 
when you give the message, go back. And this man, as he was going back, using the other route, another man who was also a prophet came and gave him a wrong message, which was in verse uh, 18. And he told him to say, God has spoken to me, to say you should come in my house and come and eat some food. The moment he finished eating, God actually gave a message to the, to the other prophet who had given him the, 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 the message to say, come and eat. And he told him to say that this man will not even be buried. And because he has disobeyed me, he has done the wrong things. I will make sure that he will not actually do what? Face that tomorrow and all that. So when you look at all this, it, it, you know, this book has actually taught me a lot because many of the times, most of us, just because somebody says I'm a prophet, God has told me, it's not everybody that God says. Some people, they are just coming to give you messages that will give you a headache, no peace. Because when God speaks, there must be a connection in the spirit where you confirm it and sometimes you have to go and consult from him to say god this is what i've received but this prophet did not even consult god he just believed to say because he's a fellow prophet he has told me he just goes and do what that this is chapter 13 in your own time you, you i'm just summarizing read it and when you go into chapter 14 you will find another king again the same king which is uh G Jeroboam, <laughs> sorry about the, the pronunciation of the weight. This was a man who was actually told by God, by a prophet who is Ahijah. Ahijah was a blind prophet who God was using. And when the son of the, the king was sick, this man, the king, told the wife to say, go and lie. Don't say to say that uh, you are my wife. You should go and say that uh, you, are, you have come to inquire about the son and all that. But before this wife, because he told him to cover himself, before he, she just even reached, God had given a message to Aija. And God told him to say, you should say this. And when God said it to Aija to say, ah, this is what God has said. And the, your son, the moment you are going back to go and step into your house, your son will not live, will die and all that. So why am I bringing in these stories? I just want to encourage you, child of God, to say that it, there is a cost of disobedience. Because for this uh, man to lie, he never wanted, because he was given a word by God. He was going in disobedience. He was doing all sorts of things that God did not want him to do. And this is why he was so scared to say, if, he, if the wife mentioned to say, I'm the wife to this one, then God will actually start, the man of God will start telling him to say, this is what God is saying and all that. But God does not lie. God does not do things because you give a lot of money in the church or because you are helping people. You can be helping people and yet you are busy prostituting and using the same the money that you are, you are getting reckless and you say, because I'm giving out, trust me, it does not pay like that. There is need for you to go in obedience. This is why God says, if you love me, in the first verse that we read in John chapter 14, verse 23, if you love me, you obey my commands. Meaning that if you love God, there is need for you to follow. Here, what made the kingdom of, uh, of Solomon to be torn down is because of what? Disobedience. So we should understand to say that disobedience cost. How many people nowadays they don't care? They don't care at all, at all. They just do things the way. Like, let's see. You find that some people, they have talents and all that, but the same talents, they, are, they, they depend on them, but they don't care about themselves and they expect their talents to keep ongoing. No, it is impossible. We should learn from the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Look at, he's not a, a more anymore. And the fact that he's no longer around, the church is still moving. The people are still watching his videos. People are still receiving Jesus Christ. People are growing in faith. To show that when you desire to walk in the God way, God will help you so that that which you are sowing, it will not be uprooted by the enemy. It will actually help even though you are no longer there. It will help those who remain. So whatever you are doing today, desire to say that I do things that will help my children and others who yet come and see whatsoever I'm doing. You walk naked and you expect to say that your children won't see those nakedness. They'll find them and you'll be ashamed. And these are the things that will influence them to say, ah, since our parents, they did this, we also want to do them. And how do you even teach them to say, don't do this? Because you have done them and all that. So let's desire to learn from these stories and do the right things so that we may please our God. So, child of God, I say, may God bless you. Don't be reckless in whatsoever you are doing. Desire to be right all the time.